G'day everyone, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be going through a really simple setup to shoot some sunglasses that's super versatile and creates a really eye-catching photo. It's quite simple, it just uses one light. We'll do a little bit of compositing once we get into editing, but it's all pretty straightforward. So it should be pretty good for people who are at that beginner sort of level. You might have seen photos like this before. We're going to use a hard light source, a single light source, so that the shadow of the sunglasses becomes a feature of the actual image. And we're going to use a simple two color setup to create a nice sort of contrast between the two colors and make the, the photo really pop. The two colors I went for for this image were purple and yellow. Uh, part of the reason for that is that purple is my, my favorite color and yellow is a complementary color to purple. So for those who know their color wheels, complementary colors will create lots of color contrast in the image and will really make it uh, sort of explode off the frame. Uh, the other reason why I went with for these two is that yellow is an active color and purple is a passive color. Uh, and active colors tend to be what draws, uh, draws the attention from our eyes. So we're gonna use that active eye-catching yellow and put the sunglasses on top of that which should make our eye go towards that part of the frame and then eventually to the sunglasses. One thing I will say about using bright colors like this is you wanna be checking your RGB histograms just to make sure that you're not overexposing any of the, the single color channels. Uh, if you're just looking at the luminance histogram, then things can look like they're okay, um, but you, you'll probably be getting very close to clipping one of the color channels. So in this photo here, for example, I'm getting very close to clipping the red because I've got this really bright yellow in the frame, uh, but I'm not clipping it. So there are three things really that we're playing around with. The first one is the position and the height of the light. And you just want to adjust that until the shadow starts to look good. We're going for a mirror effect. So I'm trying to get the shadow to be weighted similarly to what the sunglasses are. There's also the position of the cardboard, how much yellow you have and how much purple you have. And then the position of the camera as well, how high the camera is. And I've gone for a height where it's sort of high enough that we're coming down on top of the sunglasses and emphasizing that shadow, but also low enough that we can see the front of the lens and eventually we'll be able to see the actual uh, Gucci logo on these sunglasses too. I know also that I want the sunglasses to be sitting uh, and confined by the yellow bit of card. I don't want them to sort of be overlapping either the sunglasses or the shadow overlapping with the the purple so that helps me constrain things and then it's just a matter of placing things so they sort of feel good you know using a sort of rule of thirdsy stuff diagonal lines will always look a lot more dynamic than straight lines so we're using a couple of diagonal lines created by the yellow bit of card to create a nice dynamic composition throughout the frame uh, we're also mimicking the diagonal lines from the card with the sunglasses themselves. And we're sort of mimicking the lines of the yellow card, but not replicating it exactly. You don't want things to look too contrived, but you want there to be that consistent sort of flow throughout the image. Okay, so once we're happy with the overall composition, we can get to actually shooting. And there were three images we're going to end up with that we'll composite together for our final photo. The settings I used for this was shutter speed of a 200th of a second, I think maybe a 250th. Uh, I'll put that in the video when I actually go and check it on my computer. Uh, an aperture of f16. That just meant that the entirety of the sunglasses were in focus and most of the cardboard as well. And then an ISO of 100. Keep that nice and low and keep the image nice and clean. We're not going to actually take this photo that we've set up first. We're going to take another photo and then come back to it. So I've dialed in my camera's settings and I've got in my focus, and I want that to remain consistent throughout the entirety of the three images that I shoot. The first photos that we're gonna take are for the gradients on the actual lenses themselves. The good thing about doing the gradient photos first is if you do bump the sunglasses, then you can sort of start over from scratch and it's a little bit easier to start uh, over again. Uh, if you're doing the gradients last and you bump things, it's like, well, too bad, uh, gotta go back from square one. So to do this, we actually need to move the light around to the front of the sunglasses. Now, when I was filming the video, I put the light to the left-hand side of the glasses. Uh, when I finished with the final shot, I actually moved the light to a different position. 
So I had the light coming from the right hand side, sort of the right back of the sunglasses, almost coming in the same angle as the, the, uh, the face or the lenses of the sunglasses. And you can see that by where the shadow falls in these gradient photos. And I'm also going to put on a large softbox as well. I'm using a three foot softbox in this instance. And that'll do a couple of things. It'll soften the gradient of the light. And it's also going to remove any shadows cast by the arms or the, the frame of the sunglasses, which could get behind the lenses and cause some sort of unsightly looking shapes in the glass. We just wanna have a nice clean gradient across the front of that glass. I also used some thicker card than what I used when I was shooting the video, which reflected the light a bit better too. Uh, and having the light coming from the side and the back, sort of the, the back of the, the photograph, but the, the side slash slightly in front of the sunglasses, uh, gave me this really nice transition across the gradient that I wasn't getting when I put it over on the left-hand side. There may be a way of getting this all in the same shot if you had a couple of pieces of card and you put them in the right position. Uh, I just took a photo for each lens and moved the card between each shot. You just gotta be really careful. You don't wanna move the glasses when doing this. Uh, every time I composite photos, I seem to move the objects. I, 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 <laughs> I can't seem to help but move things, but try and avoid it as much as you can because it just makes life a little bit more difficult for you down the track if you're moving things between shots. Once we've taken our gradient photos and the lenses, then we can go back and move our light to the original position and take the final shot. And hopefully things haven't moved too much. So we move our light to the back of the sunglasses, same place that it was originally, and we take that final photo, just metering again for F16, so that we're getting a nice exposure in our shot. And then we got all our photos ready to throw into Photoshop and put all together. Alrighty, so we are in Photoshop and we've got our three photos, one, two, and three. And you can see, as promised, I have managed to move the sunglasses between these three shots. So it's gonna make things a little bit trickier, but it shouldn't be too bad. Now there are a few things we need to fix up and we'll just go through them one at a time, but let's start with the big stuff and sort out these lenses here. So just to try and line up the photos a little bit better, I'm gonna select all the layers and I'm going to go to uh, image, no, edit, and auto align layers. Just leave it on auto, and hopefully this might make life a little bit easier when we get to blending the lenses together. Let me have a quick look at how that's done. That looks pretty good. Okay, so uh, hopefully our lives will be a little bit easier. Now, let's give a go selecting these photos and you'll see it doesn't do a very good job at selecting the actual lenses so what we're going to use is a little trick to make it easier for Photoshop to see the edges here I'm going to add in a curves layer and what I'm going to do is crank the contrast on this layer so we're trying to get a more defined edge around the lens here now the aim isn't for this to look good, okay? Um, something like that should do a pretty good job. What I'm gonna do is then select those two layers, so the new curves layer and the old lens layer, and I'm going to duplicate them, merge them, and then I'm gonna use this to make my selection. Let's have a look at how it goes now. All right, looks a fair bit better. So I'm just using the quick select tool going around the edges there. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so what I can do now is go back to my original layer. And then mask that out. Same process again. Cool beans, that's looking a lot better, nice and easy. Now immediately I notice that the left lens is a lot darker than this one on the right. So let's add in an exposure layer. Brightness layer, never know which one's gonna be better. 
and we'll just create a clipping mask on that. And let's pump up the brightness so that they look somewhat consistent between the two of them. Maybe I should actually make this one a little bit darker as well. All right, I think that, <laughs> I think that looks good. All right, so uh, another thing I thought would be nice to do is at the moment, because we used white paper to reflect light into the lenses, we're getting a gray gradient here. But I think it'd be nice if we match the gradient of these lenses to the purple that we're getting over this side. And we're gonna do that just with our eyesight using a color balance layer. So on top of my lenses folder there, I'm gonna add a, another layer, a color balance. I'm gonna make it a clipping mask again. And then I'm gonna add in a bit of magenta, maybe a smidge of blue. That looks pretty cool, maybe a little bit too intense. So I might just drop the opacity of that down to 75%. It's the sort of thing I want to be present, but not glaringly obvious, but I reckon that looks really nice. Okay, next let's fix the second biggest problem, which is this shadow underneath the cardboard here. This is gonna be really easy to do. What we're going to do is we're going to select color range, and we're going to go for the yellow. And we're just going to make sure we get plenty of yellow tones in there because there'll be some slight differences uh, as the light falls off. I'm going to press OK. And what I'm going to do now is a layer via copy. All right, so we've selected the yellow color, done a uh, layer via copy. And you'll notice now we have this really nice clean line created by the yellow cardboard. So we can very easily get rid of this shadow now, nice and quickly. What I'm gonna do is just create, what I'm gonna do, black layer, pop it above the base image, but below this yellow layer. And then I can do a nice, quick and easy clone along this. And you wouldn't even know that shadow was ever there. You don't need to be too precise with this clone either because, you know, it's just like cardboard texture down here. Um, so it's not going to be very obvious that we've cloned that out. Always good when you're doing clones. Look far away, close up, and that looks pretty inconspicuous. Next thing we're going to do is just fix up the cardboard a little bit. So it sort of leans back this way up here, and I want that to be a nice straight line. Uh, it goes blurry because of the, uh, the nature of the photo, but I'm not too stressed about that. This bit up here, uh, what we'll do is grab this section down here and just do another layer of our copy and move it up. Let's just grab the, let's grab the base image and move it up there. Line that up, looks pretty good. And pop on a mask and just make these transitions a bit nicer. Cool. All right, let's get rid of this reflection here. Let's start with the healing brush and see how that goes. Let's try clone instead. Okay, it's looking a little bit blotchy, but what we can do now is go in with a bigger brush. We should be able to make it look a little bit more even uh, with our heel. Let's go back to our heel. Last thing I'm going to do, that's looking pretty good as far as the clone goes. Add an exposure layer. Be able to stop, invert that. And, and I'm just going to do a bit of burning to try and get the curve right here. With a low opacity, 20% and 20% flow as well. Okay, 
cool. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So I find with doing that sort of cloning, yeah, good to start with a clone brush, uh, which will do, you know, a, a pretty good job, but it'll look blotchy. And then you can sort of go over the top of it with a heel and that, that gives you some natural looking transitions. Okay, there's one more thing I want to do before I think we can call this a day. And if I zoom in down here, you'll notice there's a Gucci logo, uh, which is something we want to have in the final photo because it's a product shot, but you can't really see it how it is. So we're going to bring this out a little bit more. Now, the way to do this or the way I'm going to do it is just to create that logo again. So I'm going to go onto Google here and go into images. Perfect. Can't ask for much better than that. All right, that's our Gucci logo. So let's just do some transforms to this and match it up with the logo we have down there. Okay, so the first thing I'm just matching up is the length of this, all right? Hit enter now, and now I am going to do a warp transform and play around with these to match up the curve of the logo with the curve of the logo in the glasses. It's not perfect, but it looks pretty good, I think. hit enter on that so i'm gonna clone out the original logo behind here and maybe i'll do a heel so i want to grab this logo now or the text from it anyway i'm just going to lasso this Whoop. And I'm going to select it. Yeah, select color range. Grab that. And I'm going to make this a different color. Going to solid color. And let's make this a yellow, like our yellow here. Yeah, our dropper tool does a good job with that. Boom. Cool, that looks awesome. Uh, it's a little bit too punchy, so we'll just drop the transparency down for that. So it's blending with the environment behind it. And that looks pretty sweet. Thanks for joining me on the video. I'll catch you next time. Have a good one.